Hey YouTube, it's Faye. And for today's video, I'm gonna share with you how to service the fluid on your Toyota if you have one of those dreaded sealed automatic transmissions. So the subject car for the first part of this video with the drain and fill is a 2006 Lexus 470. And this is the A750F transmission. And then I'm going to show you the check procedure on this 2009 Tacoma. And this one has the A750E transmission. So here goes. Tools you're going to need for this job. Pocket screwdriver, a 24 millimeter socket, a shallow one preferably, a 14 millimeter socket, doesn't matter what size, a beaker, a somewhat low profile beaker, the WS fluid. How many of these is going to depend on how many flushes you want to do. I normally like to get the WS from Toyota, however the customer supplied this and it does say that it meets the standards for WS, so that's fine. However, you know, I, I recommended uh, the Toyota and I recommend Toyota to you. Oh, and, and one of these. I got this from Jegs. I'll link it below. You could also just get a hand pump. This is just so much easier for me and I don't like making a mess, so this is good. The first thing I do is I put an entire quart in there and then I empty it back in. Now this only ever holds clean fluid and only clean WS. I do a lot of these services so it makes sense that I buy this. But same for you if you're going to be using this make sure that you should only use clean WS in it or clean it out every single time. Then of course what I do is I pump it back into the bottle so that whatever is left I know like that's that's my baseline. I'm never going to be able to get that back into the transmission. So I'm going to drain it out, measure it, dump this, measure out my clean fluid, put my clean fluid into here, and then put that back into the transmission. So here goes. And on this transmission, the drain plug is right here. It's a 14 millimeter plug. And then up above, all the way up here, I know it's hard to see. Can sneak my hand. Yeah, all the way up here is the fill plug and you always want to undo this one first and just make sure that you can actually open it. I know it's really hard to see, but if I... You can see that it says WS on it and that's how you know that it's for the transmission and not for obviously the transfer case because that doesn't take WS fluid and also the fill plug for the transfer case. You've got the drain here and the fill here for the transfer case. So it only makes sense that this one up here that says WS is gonna be for the transmission. The other plug we have down here is the check plug. This transmission has zero fluid leaks, so I know that all I'm gonna do is drain out fluid and then measure it and then fill it back up with the same amount of fluid as the fill plug. Simple as that. In order to get to the fill plug, I'm gonna start by removing this little clip. pulling this out of the way. There we go, just so that I'll have a little more access easily to my fill plug there. Okay, first things first, just gonna make sure that I can remove this, and yes I can. Notice the fill plug has a rubber o-ring, that's another way you can differentiate it. And there's a better look at the WS marking on it. So you really can't mess this up no matter what transmission. Now I've got my bucket underneath my drain plug. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that 14 millimeter bolt and let that fluid drain out. Tell the condition of the fluid is pretty poor. However, this service has been done before on this vehicle with regular service intervals, meaning around every 60,000 miles. We can see it's filling up and yeah, about two and a half, three quarts is typically what you'll find in these for just a drain and fill when the transmission is cold. And I actually have enough fluid to maybe do three or four drain and fills. Definitely a minimum of two, but the more, the better. <laughs> Here's a look at the gasket. You see it's a little crush washer. And I'm not gonna replace this for just the flushes, but at the very end, when I do my last flush, I'm gonna replace that gasket. I'm gonna link the part number down below. Okay, and we can see it stopped just barely underneath 2,500 milliliters. So look at the old fluid in the light, ugh. Then I just poured it into a container 
that's not going to leak and then I can just bring it to an O'Reilly's or AutoZone or oil change place and recycle it like engine oil. Then using some clean rags, I just wipe out the entire inside of this container and make sure that it is super freaking clean because I'm going to fill this one up using what the customer provided, um, which does, uh, does meet the Toyota WS specification, but once again, I do recommend getting the actual fluid from Toyota. I filled this to the exact same amount, a little under 2,500 milliliters, and then of course, I've already had this filled for what will be left behind. I poured in my pre-measured out amount. And this fits underneath here perfectly. I'm just taking this and putting that up into the fill hole there. And then I'm gonna pump until all that fluid is in the pan. Then after it's all in there, it's just super easy. You just close that and it pinches off. Make sure that none gets all over this person's driveway. Pull this out. And then this actually clips right on the side. Look how awesome that is. Put that plug back in. That one is really only hand tight and that's fine. I'm also going to reattach this shift selector right now because I'm going to cycle the vehicle through all the gears before I drain the fluid again. Make sure that guy's not going anywhere. And let's start up the truck. most important are going from park to reverse to neutral to drive. You don't really need to do these two, I just kind of do them anyways, because why not? Try to do like a three count for each one, and I will do this about three to five times front to back. second drain. You can see the fluid. You know it looks a lot more pink. It still is pretty nasty. That's because the system can hold anywhere from 12 to 15 quarts of fluid. So the reason why I like to cycle it through to make sure that as much of that new fluid gets into the torque converter and cycles out the old stuff as much as possible. So I'm gonna do this a bunch of times and hopefully the fluid at the end comes out really clean. One last thing to note is depending on how long you spent cycling through the gears, you just wanna make sure that the transmission fluid is cold when you do this because obviously you're going to be measuring fluid like for like so if you're going to be putting in cold fluid you need to make sure that you're emptying out cold fluid because the volume is going to change you definitely want to be sure that you're as accurate as possible okay and here's our second drain you're probably thinking what the heck well the first time that i drained it out all the fluid had sort of settled in the pan this time I had run the engine and the transmission started pumping fluid all the way around. So never assume the fluid level. Always measure it and always put in exactly what you take out. So this is drain number two. And then from there, I'll repeat the drain and fill procedure until I'm satisfied with the color that the fluid comes out at the final flush or until I've done it a reasonable amount of times or I run out of fluid. So in this case, I did that service four times for drain and fills. Now this is my final reinstallation of this drain plug. So I'm gonna replace this. You can tell that it's, it's flat, it's sandwiched. But the one that I brought with me today is this copper crush washer. I brought a few different sizes. Here's another size. This one actually isn't gonna work. Just make sure, do you see how there's a little shoulder right there? This one isn't gonna work because you don't want it to sit on the shoulder there. It's not gonna seat properly. This one here, this copper crush washer, is a great choice because it fits nicely over past the shoulder and it's new and it'll crush really well. And if you wanna get all sorts of fancy, here is the actual and yes, I did get two because the same one is used for the check plug and the drain plug and they both get torqued to 15 foot-pounds. Like I said, you don't have to replace the crush washer in between every single drain and fill, but definitely replace it at the end of the service so that you don't have any leaks. 
So the next step would be to check the fluid level. Now, for some of you, if your transmission has zero leaks, like the Lexus, and you know that the fluid was at a safe level prior to you servicing it, just following the steps in the first part of this video may be enough for you. However, if you have a leak in your system, or if it has been serviced before and you haven't had a chance to test drive the car so you cannot verify that the fluid level is good, then you'll wanna perform a check. Tools that you will need for this job. First of all, a clean drain pan to catch whatever falls out of that check plug if you happen to overfill or if you overfill on purpose at the end of your service just so that you can perform an accurate check. A lot of people like to do that and I think that's a great idea. A shop chicken is always helpful for catching any bugs that are underneath the vehicle that you're working on so they don't end up in your hair. Uh, and then a five millimeter Allen key socket. I do like using the socket so that I'll be able to put it on the end of a ratchet because people love to over tighten the heck out of everything and you never really know. Lastly, we're gonna need to have our tech stream plugged into the OBD port of our vehicle here. And yes, I also have this thermal gun just because I see a lot of people using this instead of tech stream or an equivalent software that can communicate with the transmission. So I'm just gonna give sort of a side-by-side -side comparison for what tech stream reads versus what this reads. Now, if you have one of these thermal guns and you know the level of accuracy already or you have something else that you can corroborate it with and you feel comfortable with that, that's fine. Just notice that there is a difference between reading the actual sensor from TechStream and then reading the outside of the metal transmission pan with a thermal gun. So here goes. So we will begin by turning the vehicle on, but not starting the engine just yet. And then on TechStream, we will connect to the vehicle. And that will take a second. But now you can see that it's recognized, okay, Toyota Tacoma 2009. There's our engine. It's also gonna ask you for any options. There's gonna be a whole series of options here. For this one particular circumstance though, for checking the transmission fluid, it doesn't matter. You can pick whatever. If you have a question about traction control or if you have a question about smart key and you don't know, don't worry, pick whatever you want in this instance. Great, and from here, we're gonna go to the engine and ECT section and we're gonna choose data list. And then in here you can see we have so many different options for all the readings that are available. I'm gonna scroll over until I find what I'm looking for. And here we have a couple readings at the very end. You can see here automatic transmission oil temperature one and two and you can see that they're both the same and they both are measured in Fahrenheit. So this is what I'm going to be using when I take my reading. Okay, so right now, as you can see before, we have a transmission temperature reading of 79.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, let's say you wanted to read Celsius, you could absolutely change the text stream over to Celsius. That's a different tutorial for a different day. Right now, we're just going to take readings in Fahrenheit. So obviously, 79.2 is not in the range where you want to take the reading. The reading should be taken between 97 degrees Fahrenheit and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So in order to achieve that, I'm going to have to heat up the transmission by running the vehicle for a little bit. So I'm going to start the truck and let it idle until I see the range that I want to see. And then I'll also verify that will corroborate with our uh, thermal gun to sort of compare and contrast. Now, one thing also to make note of is that before you do this, make sure that your vehicle is parked on a level surface. It's easy for me with the truck because literally I can just stick a level in the bed. <laughs> Uh, this surface is a little bit uneven, so I had to do a little bit of trial and error to get it in a safe spot, but I'm at a safe spot now where the little bubble in my level is right between the lines. You don't have to get that scientific. I'm just a perfectionist about everything. So we're going to go ahead and start up the truck. And I'm just going to watch as the transmission temperature rises. And uh, we'll come back in a second. Would you look at that? Now we are within specification. So let's go underneath the vehicle and see a couple of things. First of all, let's see what we read down here with this guy. And it's not too far off. You can see how close I am to the transmission. Um, so it looks like it's just a few degrees low. Just to give you a fuller picture of what you should expect to see, I went ahead and added about a half a quart more of fluid to this. You'll be able to see it 
flowing out from being too full and then the drip that it should look like when it is at the perfect level. So here goes, I'm gonna try to do it where I can actually be doing it and show you at the same time. So, there, okay, check port. Okay, and here you can see, this is what too full looks like. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it until it gets to a trickle. See, see, see. Okay, and that's about good. So, whoop. There are some people that believe that once you drain all of it out and there's no more trickle at all, close it up and then add a little bit more fluid. Some people say a quarter to a third of a quart. I don't really subscribe to that method. What I do is I wait until it trickles so it makes that noise in your drain pan and then I put the plug back in, torque it to specification, and then I'm done. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I hope that it helps you in performing a service on your own sealed automatic Toyota transmission. And I hope that you don't forget to buy the actual Toyota WS Fluid. No, I am not a Toyota snob rather than some imposter. So <laughs> I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Another interesting thing to note is that on this transmission for the two-wheel drive, you can see that the fill plug is right here on the tail shaft. So a two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive of this transmission is a little different. Hey YouTube, I almost just hit myself in the eye. <laughs>